QuickBooks Online 2023. Taxes, business car and trucks, expenses, deduction. Get ready to earn the skills needed to boost your bank books on up with QuickBooks Online 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in our QuickBooks Online test company file using the accountant view as opposed to the business view. You can toggle between the two views by going to the cog up top and switching the view down below. We've been looking at tracking the miles using the QuickBooks Online tracking tools primarily focused on giving information to sole proprietors for helping with their tax preparation and the automobile deduction using the mileage method. When in the accountant view, this is located on the left-hand side under mileage. This is the intro screen we saw last time. When we skip that intro screen, we see a screen like this. Now, I just wanted to reiterate that most of the information on this screen is not really adding anything to the financial statements, the balance sheet and the income statement, but is more informational type of stuff. So before we understand how we can put this into our bookkeeping system to help us with our taxes, we want to get an idea of the deductibility of auto expenses on the taxes. So let's talk about that now. Most of this information is coming from publication 334 tax guide for small businesses for individuals who use schedule C tax year 2022, which you can find on the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov. This is the first page of the form 1040, noting that if you are a sole proprietorship, you will typically have another schedule, a schedule C that will flow into schedule one and ultimately flow in here to line eight of the form 1040. This is a screenshot of a schedule C, which is a profit or loss from business. The form typically needed to be added if you are a sole proprietorship and you can see it basically consists of an income statement, income minus expenses. Our focus here is on a particular type of expense, that being the auto deductions related to a vehicle uh, type of expense. And there's a couple different ways we might deal with being able to take that deduction, which will have some implications on how we might be setting up our bookkeeping and tracking our miles within software such as a QuickBooks. So we have car and truck expenses. If you use your car or truck uh, in your business, you may be able to deduct the costs of operating and maintaining your vehicle. You may also be able to deduct other costs of local transportation and traveling away from home overnight on business. Local transportation expenses. Local transportation expenses include the ordinary and necessary costs of all of the following. When we're looking at deductions related to a sole proprietor schedule c type of business will often see the term ordinary and necessary for expenses which are basically deductions on the schedule c those are the expenses that we needed to consume in order to help us to generate the revenue once again local transportation expenses include the ordinary and necessary costs of all of the following getting from one workplace to another in the course of your business or profession when you are traveling within the city or general area that is your tax home. So we have a few definitions involved here, but generally the idea is in your general vicinity of your tax home, you're doing, you're traveling within that vicinity and they're kind of trying to carve out the concept of commuting. And one reason they might be doing that is because if you were a W-2 employee, as opposed to a sole proprietor, you don't typically get to deduct your commute to your place of employment. So that's what we kind of have to figure in when we're talking about the local transportation. So then in order to figure that, we have to kind of determine what our uh, tax home is. 
to figure out what is going to be a commute and what might not be a, a commute, right? Visiting clients or customers. So obviously when you're going to a client or customer, that's generally not going to be a commuting type of situation because now you're visiting a location that you're not commuting to on a regular basis or is your primary place of business. Going to a business meeting away from your regular workplace. So you have your regular workplace. Note that your regular workplace, you might have a home office, for example, but if you're working someplace other than your home office, you would think if that was your primary place of work, the commute to that office would be a commuting type of situation. But if you go into another meeting that's not to that office, then you would think that that would be a local transportation type of expense where you'd be tracking the miles and whatnot. So getting from your home to a temporary workplace when you have one or more regular places of work. These temporary workplaces can be either within the area of your tax home or outside of that area. Local, trans local business transportation does not include expenses you have while traveling away uh, from home overnight. So the tax code kind of breaks up the type of uh, expenses for travel, such as driving your car for the local travel that's around your tax home and the longer distance travel that you might have, which would mean, usually that means that you're gonna be spending the night, you know, outside of your local area, for example. So those expenses are deductible as travel expenses and are discussed later under travel and meals. So however, if you use your car while traveling away from home overnight, use the rules in this section to figure your expense deduction. So in other words, if you have the overnight travel, then you might be using some other means to get there, like an airplane or a bus or something like that. But if you're using your car, then you might be able to track the mileage in a similar type of fashion as we would be talking about in our QuickBooks system. So generally, your tax home is your regular place of business, regardless of whether you maintain your family home. Uh, it includes the entire city or general area in which your business or work is located. Example, you operate a printing business out of a rented office space. You use your van to deliver completed jobs to your customers. So you can deduct the cost of round trip transportation between your customers and your print shop. Caution, you cannot deduct the cost of driving your car or truck between your home and your main or regular workplace because that's basically the commuting costs, right? So these costs are personal commuting expenses. And again, you can kind of mirror that with, and think about it. I think about it as though the tax code is trying to make it fair between the sole proprietor and the W-2 worker. The W-2 worker doesn't get uh, commuting deductions to commute to their place of employment. So office in the home. So then the question obviously will come up. What if my home is my office, right? So then your workplace can be your home if you have an office in your home that qualifies as your principal place of business. So for more information, see business use of your home later. Example, you are a graphic designer. You operate your business out of your home. Your home qualifies as your principal place of business. You occasionally have to drive to your clients to deliver your completed work. You can deduct the cost of the round trip transportation between your home and your clients, because obviously your home is your principal place of business in this case, and you're driving to your clients, and therefore you would think that would be a transportation, something that you can deduct, right? Which means we would track the miles for those type of trips. So methods for deducting car and truck expenses. So for local transportation or overnight travel by car or truck, you can generally use one of the following methods to figure your expenses. So here's where it gets a little tricky. You've got the standard mileage rate, and you've got the actual expenses. Now, when we're thinking about the QuickBooks system of tracking miles, we would be thinking we're probably using the standard mileage rate, which is quite common, but it gets a little bit tricky when we use the standard mileage rate because we're probably deducting the normal expenses in QuickBooks related to the automobile, which includes you know, gasoline and maintenance and that kind of stuff. So we cannot take both the actual expenses and the mileage and use the mileage method, we would then be doubling up on the deductions. So therefore, if we're using the mileage method, so what we have to do from a QuickBooks standpoint is say, okay, am I using the mileage method or am I using the actual expenses method? If I'm using the mileage method, 
how can I integrate the tracking of the miles to make the mileage method easy for me to, to help my tax professional at the end of the year is the, is the general idea. And do I need to integrate that into my financial statements in some way, shape or form? So that's what we'll take a look at in future presentations. So standard mileage rate. So you may be able to use the standard mileage rate to figure the deductible costs of operating your car, van, pickup or panel truck for business purposes. That's where the rate generally, I believe, is being pulled from when you're looking at the QuickBooks uh, system in terms of the rate that they were using to figure you know, the benefits that you might get. So the business standard mileage rate uh, from January 1st, 2022 to June 30th, 2023 is 58.5 cents per mile. The business standard mileage rate from July 1st, 2022 to December 31st, 2022 is 62.5 cents per mile. They actually divided it up in 2022, and then it's gonna go up in 2023 and later in compliance or in alignment, hopefully with inflation. As inflation goes up, these rates you would think would go up as well. Caution. If you choose to use the standard mileage rate for a year, you cannot deduct your actual expenses for that year except for business-related parking fees and tolls. This becomes a bookkeeping problem because now when I actually pay stuff on a cash-based system, which is what many small businesses want to do, they're going to be charging their expenses based on the bank feeds when things go out of their checking account. When they're auto-related, we're going to be tracking those items for taxes if I'm going to use a mileage method, then I have to I have to basically remove the expenses that were the cash actual expenses and replace it with the mileage method in some way, except we might still be able to get some ex actual expenses on top of the mileage method, such as parking fees and tolls. So choosing the standard mileage rate. If you want to use the standard mileage rate for a car or truck you own, you must choose to use it in the first year the car is available for use in your business. So in later years, you can choose to use either the standard mileage rate or actual expenses. One of the reasons I believe this is the case is because if you were able to put the car or truck on the books in the first year, and take the actual expenses, which could include depreciation and possibly accelerated depreciation, then you can take a large expense in the first year and then switch to the mileage method, which still gives you a pretty good deduction in following years. So in order to stop that, the, the IRS is gonna say, okay, well, you, you, have, you, you may have to choose, you know, you don't get to switch back and forth possibly if you're gonna be taking uh, the actual, if you use the actual method, right? So if you want to use the standard mileage rate for a car or truck you own, you must uh, choose to use it in the first year the car is available for use in your business. So if you choose to use the standard mileage rate for a car you lease, you must use it for the entire lease period, including renewals. Standard mileage rate uh, not allowed. You cannot use the standard mileage rate if you so this is when you can't use the standard mileage rate. Number one, operate five or more cars at the same time. Number two, claimed a depreciation deduction using any method other than straight line, for example, acres or makers. In other words, when you take the actual mileage, uh, the actual deduction method, you might be able to take depreciation and makers is an accelerated depreciation method, meaning you get to deduct more in the first year. So that's what they're going to be skeptical of on the IRS. You take a big deduction for actual expenses in the first year, including this big lump depreciation, and then switch over to the mileage method, which still gives you a significant amount of deduction. And that seems like kind of double dipping uh, on. So that's why there's limitations. Three claimed a section 179 deduction on the car. That's an accelerated depreciation in the first year, which again, you'd probably only do if you had if you were taking the actual, using the actual method for, uh, claimed the special depreciation, similar to 179, you would only do that. It's kind of a form of depreciation if you were not doing the mileage method in the first year. Five, claimed actual car expenses for a car you leased, or six, are a rural mail carrier who received a qualified reimbursement. All right, so then we have the parking fees and tolls. In addition to using the standard mileage rate, you can deduct any business related parking fees and tolls. So when we break out our bookkeeping in QuickBooks then <laughs> to try to figure out our taxes, we might wanna break out our 
uh, items between parking fees and tolls because in our in their own account because those we might st still be able to get even over and above the mileage method we're taking so you can see how this kind of influences possibly our bookkeeping here so parking fees uh you pay to park your car at your place of work or non-deductible commuting expenses okay actual ex actual expenses if you if you do not choose to use the standard mileage rate you may be able to deduct your actual car or truck expenses so how what are you going to do then you're going to ask your accountant to figure out which is better so if you qualify to use both methods figure your deduction both ways to see which gives you a larger deduction now oftentimes the actual method uh write-off method will give you the bigger deduction but that may only happen in year one and you're going to be using the car for five to ten years so you really kind of want to think about what the best deduction would be over the lifespan of the car which gets a little bit complicated but once you figure it out if you're using the actual method or the mileage method that could influence how how you're going to track your your miles within quickbooks so actual car expenses include the cost of the following so in other words these are the costs that you would have related to your vehicle if you were using the actual method as opposed to the mileage method this is the stuff that you don't have to track as as rigorously if using the mileage method instead of the actual method the big one is depreciation depreciation is a pain to calculate it takes a whole nother kind of form to kind of to kind of do and it's not something that normal like small businesses often do in their sole proprietor bookkeeping it's got to be done by the tax software it's not too difficult for tax software to do but it's uh that's the one that's kind of a it's not a cash based thing right you're not tracking it in your normal bookkeeping it's an accrual thing so garage rent gas insurance these are stuff that normally of course we would be tracking in our bookkeeping system lease payments licenses oil parking fees uh, registration repairs tires tolls these are all things that except for the depreciation that we would typically see going through our checking account if using bank feeds in quickbooks and recording the expense to auto expense of some kind we might have separate subcategories breaking all this stuff out uh, but and and the insurance is also particularly kind of uh, tricky because we might group that with other insurance like liability insurance but we probably want to group it more with the auto expenses because uh it may or may not be deduct deductible depending on the method that we're going to use and we might want to break out the stuff that could be deductible even if we're using the the mileage rate like tolls i believe uh uh that 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 might still be deductible even if we are using the mileage rate all right so if you use your vehicle for both business and personal purposes you must divide your expenses between business and personal use this also becomes tricky so you can divide your expenses based on the miles driven for each purpose this is what quickbooks is basically helping us to do we're driving around and we can basically allocate you know the miles to business or personal example you are the sole proprietor of a flower shop you drove your van 20,000 miles during the year 16,000 miles were for delivering flowers to customers and 4,000 miles were for personal use including commuting miles you can claim only 80 uh, 80 percent 16,000 over 20,000 of the cost of operating your van as a business expense so if you're using actual write-off method like depreciation and so on you would have to then you know limit it to 80 percent right but if you're using the mileage method then you would use the business miles so more information for more information about the rules for claiming car and truck expenses you can see publication 463 this is on the irs website you could search for it irs.gov irs.gov uh, reimbursing your employees for expenses so you can generally deduct the amount you reimburse your employees for car and truck expenses in other words you might try to use this mileage thing on quickbooks for example to help determine how far your employees are driving or, or whatnot to try to track their miles and whatnot and you might be using that for a reimbursement of some kind of of that based on the miles right instead of actual expenses you're going to base it on how far they've driven you have some kind of a reimbursement type of system you can imagine using quickbooks tool for that as well as although that doesn't look to be its primary uh, objective and if you were to do that 
then when you pay them in QuickBooks, we would see the reimbursements, right? So we can track possibly miles, determine the reimbursement amounts. And then of course the expenses would be coming out of the checking account using the bank feeds and we can record them, you know, appropriately at that point. So the reimbursement you deduct and the manner in which you deduct it depend in part on whether you reimburse the expenses under an accountable plan or a non-accountable plan. So if that's uh, applicable, you can dive into those in more detail uh, on the IRS website. You can start your search there. For details, you can see chapter 11 of publication 535, irs.gov, irs.gov. That chapter explained accountable and non-accountable plans and tells you whether to report the reimbursement on your employee's W-2.